Welcome to the UC Improvement Academy. Today we're going to learn about the Plan, Do, Study, Act cycle, an essential tool during the continuously improve phase of the improvement journey. We all make efforts to get better. We might be trying to improve ourselves in simple things, such as cutting down on social media, or exercising regularly, or trying to improve the performance of our team and organization. Every improvement requires change, but not all changes lead to an improvement. Many times we've made changes or we've seen change around us, hoping for improvement, but the results never got better. Plan, do, study, act cycles, or PDSAs, help us design change in an effective and organized way that enhances learning and leads to better outcomes. Using the PDSA cycle, we put a change idea in just a temporary testing environment and then follow up with a sequence of testing to refine the interventions before implementing them. Let's learn more about this with an example. You and your team at the Happy Healthy Clinic are trying to improve the experience of patients and staff while increasing the clinic efficiency. The SMART aim for the current project is to reduce the average time spent in the waiting area by patients from the current 25 minutes to 10 minutes in the next four months. After understanding the problems, learning from bright spots, and brainstorming potential interventions, your team has developed a theory of change using a key driver diagram. For more information on the key driver diagram, watch our video. Now comes the time to test ideas and interventions. Don't jump to implementation though. Everyone believes that their idea is gonna work. However, it's important to test the change idea in a rapid, temporary environment first. That way we'll learn what works, what needs to be modified, or what needs to be abandoned completely. In this temporary testing environment, the consequences of failing are low. So be brave, explore new ideas. During this temporary change environment, the people involved in the process get an opportunity to be a part of the change and share their input. At the Happy Healthy Clinic, the team wants to test the practice of a daily preclinic huddle. This will help them discuss the plan for the patients and they believe the practice will improve efficiency for the rest of the day while decreasing wait times for patients. The team needs to start small but scale quickly. The first step in PDSA is planning. Here we need to define what this test is all about. What's the objective? How will we know if the test is successful? Who's going to be involved and what's their role? And when will the test be done? It's also important to make a prediction of what you think will happen because this will enhance learning later in the PDSA stages. The initial test needs to be done on a small scale. Think one clinic day, one provider, one nurse, or one patient. Keeping the scale small makes the test easy to perform and the consequences of failure are low. The team decided to do a 10 minute huddle with one physician, one nurse, and an MA before the start of clinic on Monday. They're gonna track if all three people can get together the length of time it takes to complete the huddle, feedback from the participants, and overall wait time for that clinic. In the do phase, the team conducts the test of change. It's important not to get stuck in planning for too long, so once you have a sufficient plan, jump to the do phase and carry out that test. Record observations and document anything that was unexpected. In this example, the three team members were able to come in early and meet at 7.50 before the start of clinic on Monday. However, the team members were really unclear of what information needed to be shared, and it took a total of 16 minutes to have the huddle. The team members felt they could organize the work better in between patients during the day, but the overall wait times in the clinic were pretty much unchanged. Next is the study phase, where we learn and reflect. What worked well and how well? What didn't work? And why not? Were there any unanticipated consequences? In this case, some things went well. All three people met for the huddle and were able to review the patient list. They felt that their work was more organized and predictable during the day. But some things also didn't go as predicted. The huddle took 16 minutes instead of 10. Participants weren't clear on what needed to be discussed and at times unnecessary information was shared or information was missing altogether. 
the overall clinic wait time was unchanged. They discuss these failures and plan modifications for the next test. In the ACT phase, we decide what to do next. Based on learning, we have three options. One, we adopt the intervention. Two, we adapt the intervention, where we make some modifications to the test based on what we learned. Or adapt can also mean scaling up the original intervention across a variety of conditions. Or the third option is abandon the intervention. If an intervention consistently fails to give predicted results, or we find a better way to do things, or the intervention has undesirable consequences, the team should choose to abandon. Based on the learning from the do phase, the team decides to adapt with modifications for their ACT decision. For the next test, they're going to define specific roles and information that need to be shared in the huddle, and they predict that this will make the huddle fast and adequate. They also predict that the overall wait time in the clinic will probably take some time to improve as staff gets used to the new process of organizing the day better. This one PDSA cycle then leads to the next and so on. And as we go through the iterative PDSA cycle, we refine interventions and we scale up to involve the rest of the system. It's like moving from one clinic day to all days of the week or from one physician nurse team to two and then four and then eight. What worked well for one physician nurse team, it might need some modifications as you spread it to others. We need to keep our minds open to new ideas, new failures, and feedback from the frontline staff, as well as measuring the change over time. This sequence of PDSAs that is testing one idea, one key driver, or a process is called a PDSA ramp. Learning from one test feeds into the next, and as you scale up testing, you become more confident in the theory. This particular ramp in our example is all about the preclinic huddle. Usually, healthcare systems are complex open systems where multiple factors influence an outcome. One intervention in itself is probably not gonna be sufficient to bring about the overall desired change. Other interventions or key drivers will also need to go through similar PDSA ramps, starting with a small test of change and moving to system-wider tests. Your project will likely have several PDSAs required to achieve your SMART aim. The UC Health templates for PDSA and PDSA ramps can help you stay organized and capture your learnings all along the way. This iterative testing is critical for a successful improvement. We start off with some testable ideas, evidence, or best practice, but we're unsure how this will work in our own context. We use the PDSA cycles to refine the intervention help us mitigate failures early, and learn more about our system, most importantly. After thorough testing and optimization, then we're ready to implement it. Many promising ideas may not be successful or spreadable in our context. So failing early is good. It teaches us more about our system and intervention. Early failures are low stake and prevent us from big failures later. 10 tips for running PDSAs successfully. Do initial cycles on smallest scale possible. Think one day, one nurse, one clinic, one patient. Be flexible to test new ideas. New ideas can come from literature, can come from practices in other hospitals, can even come from non-medical industries. Many times, frontline staff may have the greatest ideas. Make sure to collect both qualitative and quantitative data along the way. Both are important. Ask the people involved how the process went. What tweaks could be made? How did the intervention impact other people in the system that aren't directly involved? Failures are great learning opportunities. Do not despise them and instead embrace them as learning. By making a prediction of what you think will happen in the PDSA during the planning phase, you'll actually be able to learn more in the study phase. Did what actually happened match your prediction and why not? That's where the learning occurs. Sufficiently complete all stages of the PDSA. Sometimes teams get stuck in the plan phase for too long before taking action in the do phase. Or they might continue the do phase for too long without closing the study loop. Follow one cycle with another and avoid large time lapses in between cycles. The goal is to get to the best change as soon as possible. Test under different conditions and circumstances. Think of different shifts busy days, weekends, and so on. PDSA cycles are a great way to increase staff and team buy-in. People don't like change to be enforced on them. 
but they like to be a part of the change, acknowledge their contribution, and celebrate successes together. Lastly, stay focused on purpose, not the intervention. Interventions will change and adapt over time, but the purpose will remain. Now it's your turn. Get out there and test your amazing ideas with PDSA Cycles to make the world better.